Hello, my name is Dr. Tony Page and I would like to uh, speak to you today about the great Tibetan master of uh, Buddhist meditation and scholarship, Dolpopa. He was a 14th century monk and to this day is a controversial figure because he spoke very openly and strongly about the reality of the true Buddha self. One of the phrases which Dolpopa used for that Buddha self was the supreme over-self, the supreme over-self of all continuums, that means of all mind streams. He also refers to it as the solid Vajra diamond self. Now Dolpopa uh, wrote a great deal about the Dharma and one of his greatest works is called the Mountain Doctrine and in that monumental text Dolpopa quotes from numerous sutras and tantras to prove that there truly is within the Dharma there truly is the doctrine of uh, an eternal unchanging uh, always existent always real self or Buddhic essence. And I would like to uh, share with you now a couple of quotations from uh, Dol Popa's great book, The Mountain Doctrine. He quotes at one point from the glorious Hevajra Tantra, where it is stated that, and I quote, great pristine wisdom dwells in the body, devoid of all conceptuality, pervading all things, though dwelling in the body, not produced from the body." End of quote. So there is the Buddha wisdom, the Buddha jnana, the Buddha knowingness, the Buddha omniscience, the Buddha mind in this body and your body and all beings bodies uh, and it is a, a knowingness a buddhic mind which pervades everything which is present everywhere in all places and it is not produced from the body it is not something that has grown from the causes and conditions and results of bodily process now let's go to another quotation uh, from Dolpopa. Uh, here he looks at the Great Drum Sutra, the Great Drum Sutra. And in that sutra, the Buddha says that um, if we cleanse ourselves of the negative emotions and character traits which pollute us, then Buddhahood is revealed. And this is exactly now what the Buddha says. He says, upon having purified the kleshas, the negative emotions and character traits, upon having purified the negative character traits of mind, the kleshas, then the self will be found." End of quote. Now let's put aside the, the book, uh, Mountain Doctrine, for a moment and uh, go right back to the earliest records of Buddha Dharma, the Pali Suttas and the Pali Vinaya, some of the earliest um, records of basic Buddhism. There is a story told in those records of the Buddha in a forest one day encountering a group of young men who were chasing after a very sexy young woman who had stolen their clothes and they were now pursuing her um, in the hope of getting back their clothes and doubtless getting something more too. They run into the Buddha and they ask him, have you seen a woman, a young girl running this way just now? And the Buddha says, young men, what do you think is better for you? That you seek after this woman or that you seek 
the self. The young men say, Master, it is better for us to seek the self. And the Buddha says, very well, sit down. I shall now teach you Dharma. There is a clear correlation there between Dharma and self, Atman. Dharma is the vehicle in words which will disclose the reality of the self. Now, I want to speak just very briefly as well about the image of the uh, Buddha embryo, Tathagatagarbha. Dolpopa quotes numerous passages uh, in his book about the Tathagatagarbha, and he says that uh, the Buddha essence, the Buddha nature, is only empty of what is not itself. It is only empty of what is impermanent, full of suffering, full of pain, full of ignorance. It is empty of that which is conditioned. But the Buddha self, the Tathagatagarbha, is not empty of its own completeness and perfection. Now, I want to relate that uh, image of the Buddha embryo. Tathagatagarbha literally means Buddha embryo or Buddha womb, um, I want to relate it to the um, Mahayana Sutra called the um, Lalita Vistara Sutra, which is about the life of the Buddha. And at one point we uh, see how the Buddha, as complete perfect Buddha, enters into the womb of his earthly mother, Queen Maya, Maya Devi, and sits within the womb of his physical mother, perfect, resplendent, shining brightly, in the lotus posture, already a complete Buddha, with all the Buddha qualities. Now that image of the Buddha as embryo in his own mother's womb, is the real underlying image behind the Tathagatagarbha, the Buddha already perfect within the womb, the Buddha already perfect within this body, your body, all beings' bodies. Perfect, complete, shining brightly, not needing to be developed, already there and perfect but deep within and needing to be uncovered. That is how the Tathagatagarbha should be understood. It's how the Tathagatagarbha Sutra speaks of the Buddha as an already perfect, complete Buddha inside the being, like a beautiful statue of gold. Of course, that is a simile, but it's speaking of a very real Buddhic presence. This is important, this idea of the Buddha as embryo in the Lalita Vistara Sutra, because it gives the lie to the claim often made by Buddhists who are frightened by the reality of a perfect Buddhahood, perfect Buddha within us already. Some people are frightened by that, terrified of it. Why? It's beyond me. They're frightened to the utmost lengths of the world and try to escape from it and want to say that uh, oh no no you have to there is nothing inside you you just just to sort of you can if you practice Dharma you can develop develop yourself like practicing weightlifting and you'll develop a muscle um, there's nothing there to speak of before no that is not the image of the Buddha uh, embryo the embryo the Buddha embryo is simply the Buddha complete and perfect already, deep within the body of the being. And it just needs to be revealed through meditation and moral cleansing. Well, I hope that has been of some interest to you and has uh, given you food for meditative contemplation and thought. Thank you very much for your attention and I very much look forward to speaking to you again, perhaps at a future date. Thank you and goodbye to you.